Welcome back to Collectors Maze. This is Finn, and I'm here today with Frank James Bailey, writer and voice actor. So That's me! <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Hello! Hi. Hi! Hi! Hi, I'm all night! No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> I like doing different voices if I can. I, I'm not a famous voice actor like Tara Strong or one of those, you know, people out there. But it's I, I've done some a lot of different things. So, yeah. so I like to keep the interviewers on her toes. <laughs> okay, I'll do, okay, I'll try. Um, so, <laughs> so I want to thank you for being with us. But I'd also like you, um, if you could, to first of all introduce to our followers the mm -hmm. comic series that you're currently writing. Which is okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, matter of fact, that's my old banner. Uh, when I first started doing this, I it was in 2015. I wrote my first book. It was an illustrated novel. I started uh, started writing it back in early 2015. I finished it in like late 2015. It was kind of in the process in 14 as well, but basically I finished it and published it. It was an illustrated novel in uh, two th late 2015. I spent all of 2016 promoting it, going to comic cons, going to bookstores, that kind of stuff. Um, long story short, Tricana is about uh, a female superhero named Tricana. Uh, she basically needs to escape this uh, evil, this planet and her evil mother. She takes, the, uh, she basically takes her um, brother and her dad and they come off to Earth, kind of Superman-ish a little bit, but you know, she comes to Earth and leaves her evil mother behind. And they age. The, her, her, da, her dad, and her brother, since they're, they're from a different planet and they're kind of aliens, uh, you know, they age one year for every 10 years on Earth. So they land in the early 1990s. Um, so for like 20 years, which I, I forget what chapter of the first book it is, but for 20 years, they kind of go back and forth and, you know, they go to different schools, make sure nobody recognizes them. But one day after a long time, you know, Takana's like, listen, we can't keep moving. I'm getting tired of this, blah, 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 blah. And this is in chapter nine of the first book. And this diner's being robbed and she turns into the superhero Takana. She puts this famous suit on and, you know, but just like in Big Hero 6, it, the suit only that, that has a cape on it and there's a lot of other things different then later on she changes to the suit that she's actually in right now which is that one right there so right. that's my old banner um from like the first year i think it was 2019 i got a new banner flips up it's really nice kind of a little wider too it's just a little bit different than that generally the same thing so i use the old banner put it down here for my video calls and everything else and i make little videos on youtube as well but i also have pops back there too <laughs> in case you can't see my little wall back there Yes, absolutely. Um, so, what's the what's the inspiration for Tricana? Well, the inspiration I was inspired by cartoons because I love cartoons. I love um, cartoons with a good storyline, with good characters, that kind of stuff. So, back in two thousand fifteen, when I was making this, there wasn't a whole lot of um, inspiration for girls. Now, my daughter at the time, she was seven. And this, I've told people when I pitch this to people all the time, when my daughter was seven, she said, Daddy, I don't like princesses anymore. I like superheroes. Right. So that's where the idea came from. That's the seed of the idea that birthed into what it is right now. Because Turkana, uh, the superhero, her alter ego is named Paige. That's my daughter's name. Right. right. So I, I named the alter ego of Turkana Paige after my daughter. And my daughter's 13 now. She's she's still in a superhero. She's just not in Turkana that much, which is totally fine. Kids grow up. I understand. <laughs> Matter of fact, she cosplayed us. She's cosplayed as Turkana a couple times, put the suit on and everything. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, she was in it was funny. We were in Indianapolis so one time for Indie PopCon and there's some little boy, oh, that's the girl, that's that's a superhero. <laughs> But it's, it's great to have a, to write a comic or a, a superhero character and somebody, even though it's my home family, they're dressing as her. <laughs> yeah. No, that, absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. You've definitely arrived at that point, right? Yeah, <laughs> sort of, yeah. So um, currently the third in the series is due out in September. Now, I, I should point out this. I want, let's clarify things just a tiny, tiny bit. Okay. I wrote three illustrated novels. Right. And I liked the novels. I liked the way they were going, but they weren't selling as much because novels are the 20 bucks a piece. So I said, right. okay, let me try a comic book. 
huge difference. <laughs> People are more willing to shuffle off five bucks than 20 bucks. Right. So I've been going with comic books from now on. I didn't start over. I didn't want to start over from the very beginning again. I just left the first three books where they're at, what they are. You want to read the stories. There they are. They're on Amazon. They're on my website, turkhan.com. Right. Um, but I started doing, doing comic books. So yes, the third comic is coming out in September, which okay. is the Labor Day weekend. Right. I, you can sort of pre-order it now on Tricon.com, but I'm having a launch party that weekend and I'm working on the fourth comic already. I'm, it's going to be like Excellent. 32 pages long and it's coming out next year. Okay. So that, that's like, I'm like 10, 11 pages into that one already. Okay, so Tricana Burmese. Burmese, is out, yes. Is out in September, mm -hmm. and you have a launch party coming. Yes. Excellent. And then I also saw, I think, um, do you have, I, okay, so you've got Tricana.com. Do you also have FrankBailey.com? Actually, I'm working on FrankJamesBailey.com. Okay. I haven't quite finished it yet. <laughs> okay. Because originally, that was just for voice acting. And even though I'm still doing voiceovers, I'm just more or less concentrating a lot on the Tricana stuff. Right. But I know that somewhere way down the road, I don't know if it's I mean, in a year from now, two years from now, somebody might buy Turkana. If right. I sell it to a Disney, if I sell it to Netflix or whatever, if somebody buys that, the website's going to go with them. Right. I still need my name. So I'm working on Frank James, but it's not up yet. It's sort of okay. coming. Um, but yeah, I'm working on that. Uh, and it's going to be voiceover. It's going to be my blog. It's going to be, you know, Hey, I wrote this, you know, that kind of stuff. But basically Tricana is really simple. It's just Tricana.com. You can go there. You can read samples of the comics by clicking on the covers. Sure. I have samples of the first three comics. Um, so yeah, I'm having a launch party and that kind of stuff. So yeah, Tricana.com is where you can go for the thing, but eventually you'll be able to go to my website, frankjamesbailey.com and, you know, see all that stuff. Perfect. Perfect. We definitely want to share that with Collectors Made. Um, so how long have you actually been interested? So you started out writing the books mm -hmm. and you transitioned to comics and I understand, but how long have you actually been writing or interested in writing? I I've been writing probably since high school, oh. but I never really pursued it that much. Um, I always thought, I, matter of fact, there's a little, um, uh, a couple articles, or not articles, but there's a couple of paragraphs of my uh, bio on Turkana.com where I started off writing sort of fanfic back in the early 80s because <laughs> there was a TV show called Voyagers and I wrote myself in Voyagers. You know, this is my little thing. And I, oh. plus I wrote myself in, that was a precursor to what fanfic is now, you know? Yes, yes. Yeah. So yes. I, I wrote myself in a lot of things. And I also, in the early 2000s, I started writing screenplays. And I love writing screenplays for movies and stuff. Never sold anything yet, but I have like several screenplays in my computer and I give now and I go back to working on them, but I, I got to make sure I'm comfortable in one thing. That's just why I do Kirkana right now. So I got to stay focused and do this. <laughs> when this gets popular, then I'll start ahead and sell a screenplay. That's but yeah, I started off writing screenplays and then I thought, well, let me try and write a book. So then, then that's the whole Turkana thing came up. And then I realized after a while, writing a comic is kind of like writing a screenplay. You're, you know, okay, this scene shot here, by shot. Scene it's by almost shot by shot. So yes. that just yeah. came easy to me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so well, that's, that's another reason why I switched back to, you know, comics. So it was just kind of easy. Oh, I'm absolutely. Yeah. You don't have to do all of the uh, descriptive buildup as you do. Exactly. In the now, to my, I have to describe things to my artist how to, because we were uh, talking about, uh, I think it was uh, comic four and there was a scene that's like, it doesn't quite right, so I, I had to switch things around, and he redid things. Oh, man, it looks a lot better. But see, it's just the way I described it to him. He didn't quite understand it. Then I had to, you know. So we're going back and forth quite. Uh, so most of the time, he understands exactly what I'm talking about and knows where I want to go. Because a lot of times, I'll pick a picture off the internet and say, oh, hey, let's do this, let's do that. And he'll, he, he, he gets it. Occasionally, we, we misinterpret things, but that happens, you know. Right. Well, it is, and it's interesting how just a little nuance in the communication can change the whole theme then. Apparently. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So, so you also previously, so I know that you're doing voice acting also and you enjoy the voices. Um, yes, that, I do. Did that come out of your previous radio career? Yes. I was in radio for between 1989 and 2009. I mainly... Uh, matter of fact, some people told me, you have a good radio voice. I was like, because uh, I was in radio. <laughs> I'm, I'm a talker. I like to talk to people. I'm a very outgoing guy. Uh, anyway, 
Uh, yes, I, I went from radio, then I went into voice acting because, you know, there's all sorts of ways to voice act. Even right. though I mostly do radio, TV commercials, podcast openings, book trailers, in a world, that kind of stuff. I've also done some internet videos for Channel Frederator. Uh, right. That's like Disney's Dark Secrets, uh, 107 Facts, a couple of those. Uh, then versus Now My Little Pony. Yeah, so I've done some. Yeah. You found those, I'm assuming? Yes. <laughs> anyway, yeah, yeah, I, I've done those. Uh, for Channel Frederator, and those are internet videos on a, internet, on a YouTube channel. Right. So yeah, I, I, I do all sorts of stuff. Now, even though I haven't done that many character voices, I like to, I want to. So eventually, if I sell Tricana, maybe they'll let me do some voices for it. Because <laughs> I would love to be the dad and maybe some villains, you know. On, on the, obviously, it can't be Tricana. <laughs> I'm a guy, female character, but I can probably play other voices on the, uh, on the show if it becomes a show. Right, right. Um, so you're also a family man, and you also oh, yeah. already mentioned how um, Paige has shown up in your work. Uh, do your kids influence your work otherwise, or show up very often? Uh, not very often in the in the storylines. I like I said, I was influenced by when Paige told me, "Hey, I don't want the uh, superheroes anymore." Although she's really into My Hero Academia right now, which is nope. a superhero show, yep. so she likes superheroes still, but she's like in My Hero Academia, and the more. The more I've watched that with her, and the more I've seen some of that anime stuff, the more I'm thinking, you know, it'd be very interesting. Because see, originally when I first wrote the first book, I've always titled it as a family-friendly book, and it was, right. you know, it, it, that's why Turkana wears an all-round bodysuit, and Brittany wears a tank to oh, no, a, a crop top because that's the way she is. Right. But then I'm thinking, you know, if it was maybe lean toward not really adult, but my 14 and over, like to say one person swore sometimes, not very often, you know, it kind of like a My Hero Academia thing. It, you just, I'd be able to talk about more things right. and be more open with it than be constrictive if it was just family friendly. Right. I guess, right now it still is. It just, I'm trying to, okay, hmm, if I sell it to a network, maybe I could sell it to a cartoon network uh, somewhere else. I, I don't know. I'm just, I have a long way to go yet, but it's just things I'm I'm thinking about in my head as I as I the more I write the story. So right, absolutely, mm -hmm. um, and I think it is really nice that you have kind of a test panel right there in your house. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now there are some things my my wife kind of disagreed with, but I'm thinking, okay, I know she's um yeah you know, she has her views on some things, but I'm thinking, mm -hmm. okay, as a story. As a writer, I know where these characters are going to go. I know why these characters are a certain way. Right. And even though sometimes she might not agree, well, that shouldn't be in a kid's... Uh, listen, it's kids deal with that kind of stuff all the time. And I don't want to give things away, but, but you know, it, when kids deal with something and if they read it, oh, I, I deal with that. You know, yes, you understand because yes. you're connecting with them, connecting with that character. Yes, absolutely. Um, so with so many Comic-Cons, and events canceled. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, I know that you're working on Turkana. You're working on one coming out for next year, the fourth. Um, what else is keeping you busy at this time? Uh, mainly right now, at this moment, I'm working on the site, which is frankjamesbuddy.com. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm learning WordPress because before, a buddy of mine named Phil, uh, he, uh, <laughs> he's working on a, a site for his business and stuff. And he said, dude, you got to go to WordPress. Um, Okay, because I always thought we're making a website through uh, their, like, uh, I, I had one through webs, I think, a long time ago. And oh. it's just, okay, put this here, put that there. Oh, that's easy. Yeah. But I learned recently that, okay, if it was on WordPress, you can just, like, transfer from one thing to another that we're going to be really easy. Yeah. Oh, I, I didn't do that originally, so now i got to start all over. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I'm really working on right now. I'm working on franktangsbay.com, and I gotta I gotta do some more tweaks on tracana.com because it has to be updated as well. Right. Um, and going on to a WordPress thing, and then of course I'm also writing and giving with my artists about the fourth comic, and I'm trying to I haven't gotten to it yet, but I really want to write the fifth comic because it has to what what comes after the four, you know? Because the my yep. idea is to kind of keep it going, kind of like a TV series. Like, for example, um, one, the first comic was Who is the Abaymon? Number two is called The Secret, but right. number two has nothing to do with the Abaymon. It's kind of like either a one-off or they, or the, the, the cartoon industry uh, calls a filler episode, you know? Okay. The third comic coming out in September, we go back to the Abaymon again. Okay. So, 
it's I don't want to do too many of those filler episodes, sure, right? But right. It, it it it'll dive more. Number two dove or dives into Britney's family a little bit. You get to see who her mom is, you know. So yeah, I'm I, I need to start working on the fifth comic eventually and see where it goes after number four. You got to keep thinking ahead and keep thinking where to go next. Right. Oh, absolutely. And mm -hmm. um and so during this time of COVID and uh, all that, um, it, you've gotten a lot more opportunity then to um, look at all those different directions that you're working in and mm -hmm. and learn WordPress, which gives you time to do that and put that together. Um, are there any other things out there, other kind of creative ventures that you haven't explored yet that you're interested in? Oh, well, like I said, I want to do more, uh, I want to get back into more voice acting stuff and I'm redoing my studio, which is in the other room. Uh, Cause now I have, um, you probably can't see it, but it's a microphone right here. It's called a, 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 a Sennheiser 416. It's very directional. Like if I go right here, you can really hear me really well. But the one in the other room is called a, a Rode NT1000. It's kind of more softer and it, 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 it makes your oh. voice a little more deeper oh. but over there is like a soundproof room this isn't so this microphone is perfect for this what i'm doing right now right but the other one's perfect for over there so once i tweak that room and that's oh another thing i uh, again you can't see it but you might have seen it on facebook and stuff i just i got a bigger monitor for this room so i can edit video oh. another thing i'm doing sometimes is my cartoon reviews on my youtube channel I, I, I haven't gotten to the cartoon reviews back again because I've been doing the website stuff. But as soon as the website stuff done, then I'll go back into the cartoon reviews and I'll probably make some videos with my son because he loves playing Roblox and video games. Oh, yes, game. yes. So I, I make a couple of videos with him. And of course, I love editing video. But yes. I got to make sure and stay focused on Tricana and promoting it and trying to sell the comics. It's a little harder to sell comics, to me anyway, online. I am an outgoing guy. I like talking to people one-on-one -on -one because sometimes you can see the enthusiasm in my voice. Right. You can see the enthusiasm in my face when I talk about this. Right. And when I tell people, oh yeah, my daughter was starting this off and it said they love the story. Exactly. You, it can't really talk about, or you know, it, it's, you know, it, you can do it all like, like we're doing right now. Right, right. But it's, it's not quite the same when you're right in front of somebody. You know, exactly. you can see their, right. and somebody can actually look through the book as I'm, you know, exactly. talking to him about it. Yeah. So, but I, that's just me. I, I'm an outgoing guy. So I like to talk to people. So on a typical basis, then uh, you're attending a lot of Comic-Con events in order to do promotion. Is that your typical uh, venue? It, yeah. Uh, I, a buddy of mine uh, kept trying to tell me that you try to do more stuff online. So I've, I've been doing a lot of stuff online this year because the only con I went to was Wizard World in Cleveland. After that, the pandemic hit and people oh, okay. started canceling stuff or rescheduling stuff. But the only one I went to this year, it was in early March. I think like first week of March. Wow. But right after that is when everything started canceling. And that's yeah. the only, only one I went to. And it was really fun because I've never been to Wizard World in Cleveland before. And okay. it was, uh, you know, a blast. <laughs> I got to talk to some of the people who I've been to, seen at other Comic-Cons. So and eventually I want to get to some of the other big ones, uh, like uh, the one in California. But that's yes. huge, though. <laughs> Never been to that one I really want to, or the New York Comic Con as well. I want to get to that one eventually. Oh, excellent. Okay, well, I'm really hoping that that's the case for this next year, opening things back up again. Yeah. Um, and so, so just curious, do you, what do you do in your free time then? Are you a video gamer? Or are you a reader? Or are you... No, a lot of times I just spend time with my kids, and a lot of times I just watch cartoons with my kids. Like recently, I was watching uh, Glitch Tex, and Glitch Tex is a fantastic cartoon. Uh, the, I love the story behind it. Glitch Tex actually came, uh, was made and produced in 2016 or 17. Oh. Uh, Nickelodeon had it, and okay. they put it beside. They didn't put it on their channel for a while. So okay. they made like 20 episodes, and it just kind of went dormant. But in 2020, I think, uh, or maybe it was 2019, uh, either Netflix and Nickelodeon had like a deal together. So they put a lot of Netflix shows on, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Nickel Nickelodeon, Nickelodeon shows yeah. on Netflix, which is why you're seeing Avatar Last Airbender, Legend Korra. Well, Glitch Dex is on there. And they only made 20 episodes because they put a halt on production. Wow. So now the 20 episodes are finally up and they're trying to say, okay, renew Glitch Dex. Sure. It's yeah. a really cool gaming show. Uh, and it's, I, I, there's a lot more things that I love about this show and I really wish they they make more of them but of course that's what the industry happens sometimes if you know 
I, I guess that's that's a that's the small worry of mine that if I sell it to a like a seltzer kind of to a like a right. network somewhere. Well, you know, Frank, I you know our surveys have said that people like uh, pink hair. We're well, gonna change your hair. To, uh, what? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it no, was. I, I would hope that they wouldn't because after all, I've been doing this for like five or six years and people know her now. Right. Why would you change her hair? Right, exactly. You know, I can understand changing some of her powers and stuff, but so she's iconic where she is now. That's that's what I'm worried about, but I, I know it happens, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think that, yeah, the nature of the beast. So yeah. so in in looking at possibly selling Chicana, mm -hmm. um, do you already have another series or something else in the work that you're thinking about? Well, I have ideas in my head, but here's something that I was told a long time ago. Uh, when Steve Jobs came back to, uh, to, um, to Apple in the early 2000s, I believe, uh, apparently they were working on all sorts of different things. And the story I heard was, he said, Stop what you're doing. We're working on this. Yeah. We're going to work on this music thing, and that's it. So he made the music thing, this little, you know, IP, uh, MP3 player, like the best thing ever, and he tried to sell that. Then he went on to the iPhone or the iPad. You work on focus on one particular thing. Yeah. Yes, I have a lot of ideas. I have an idea that, I, matter of fact, a buddy of mine said, hey, I'll help you write the Moloch powers. If you, I'll help fund it. If you, I have this thing called the Moloch powers. It's an okay. idea that I, have at, that I wrote back in high school. But again, I want to focus on Turconic and I want to make sure people know that. Right, right. Now I have other ideas and have other ideas for screenplays as well, for movies. And, but my, right now my, my focus is on Turconic because I want to make sure people know who that is. So, okay. Yeah. So how soon do you think that would sell and you would move into like a screenplay mode? <laughs> well, I know it, it, it depends because I, what I would love if, if by some miracle I did sell it to, let's say, Nickelodeon or Netflix or something, I want to be a part of it. I want to be like a showrunner okay. and say, okay, that's what, well, okay, we're going to have a cast here. We're going to, uh, well, yeah, you, you need that sound a little bit better. You know, basically, if I'm producing it and putting it together, I'm going to need to be there. Okay, even right. though I have other ideas, you got to focus on one particular thing. I mean, I'm, yeah, Butch Hartman, I think, worked on three shows at once. I'm sure he was run ragged for a while. <laughs> I would want to focus on one, maybe two, or have an idea for another one, because I'm sure if you're running two different shows at the same time, it's going to go crazy. So yeah, I would, I would love to try to run one show first and then have another one in the can, right, kind of ready to go when that one right. kind of fizzles out or screenplays as well. So, but the other, the other thing is too, my, my screenplay ideas, a lot of them are more or less, if it was a movie, it'd be rated R, you know? I have this idea for a screenplay that is um, kind of like a what they call a raunchy rom-com. Like from the early 2000s, there was the um, um, uh, Wedding Crashers. Yeah. 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 It's a funny movie. It's kind of a raunchy rom-com, but yeah. you know, it, it's it, hilarious. I have an idea for that one. I have other ideas for other th things as well, like for screenplays and stuff. So, but again, you know, it's kind of first. <laughs> right, right. No, I, I, I agree. Um, I just, I love that you have all of these possible creative right. outlets um but you are staying focused and that's um i'm sure that that'll be beneficial is is this your full-time gig then is this what you do well generally yeah my, this is my full-time gig along with voice acting and i, yeah. and I have a little part-time job that i do but it's i don't really consider it a, you know nobody right. went, hey wait, what do you do for a living well, I, I voice act and i do this nobody right. wants to know it's like bob do you scrub toilets uh no no do you really want to know that <laughs> come on <laughs> It's not really fun, <laughs> or it's whatever you do, you know. I, mean, oh, yeah, I work in a factory. Well, yeah, I, it's good to be grounded, but on the other hand, it's like people on the internet want to know, hey, this is you, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we look forward to the release of Turkana. Turkana, comic number, comic number three, which is Burmese in September. In the September, early September next year. No, no, this year. Uh, the fourth one. Oh, the fourth one. Yes, yes. The fourth one's out next year. Correct. I thought fourth you were talking about the third one. Coming next year. And it's mm -hmm. not a filler. It's a No, it's not a filler. It's matter of fact, it's going to be called a fighting blind. Oh. Because in comic number three, we find out that, uh, you know, he has a, Maurice has a power to mind control, but he has to look you in the eyes. So if you put a blindfold on, how can huh. you fight? But you won't be able to mind controlled. So uh, 
<laughs> it's called Fighting Blind, but it's it's going to be very interesting. That is. So yeah, Vermees comes back in number four. <laughs> okay. Um, and then hopefully we'll see you at some upcoming Comic Con events. Well, the good thing is a lot of the Comic Cons that I was scheduled to go to this year, yes. they just rolled over to next year. Oh. So I got Toledo's Fantastic Con. I got uh, uh, Cincinnati Comic Expo next year. I got some other Comic Cons as well. I, I haven't went through that schedule yet because I'm focusing on the dot coms, you know. Right. But I mean, it, it, all the cons are can canceled this year anyway, and it's only August. So I know. But, I know. I might as well just wait until like the end of the year to say, "Oh yeah, I'm going here next year." You know. But yeah, a lot of the cons that I went to or scheduled to this year were just rolled over to next year. So. Perfect. Okay. So we're hoping to see you there. Mm -hmm. And what else? Coming work. Um, possibly screenplays in the future. Uh, Definitely. Uh, possibly. Yeah. Screenbailey.com mm -hmm. coming. And Turkana is where you can do all things Turkana. Yeah. Yeah. Go to, go to Turkana.com. That is T E R C O N A, Turkana.com. It's right, right over there behind me. <laughs> <laughs> Right over there, see? <laughs> anyway, yeah. Uh, it's Arcana.com. You can find out more about the characters. You can find out more about where I'm going to be, which obviously I'm not going to be anywhere this year. <laughs> but you can find out, uh, you know, uh, you can read uh, short samples of the comics. Uh, you can read short samples of the books as well. Otherwise, the, oh, books, the books are also on Amazon.com too. Okay. I like, I, I, my goal is to eventually do all comics they're easier to sell so okay. if you want to buy a, a book better buy it soon because once they're gone they're gone <laughs> right right yeah. no that's that's an excellent um thing for us to make sure that we're supporting and, pr and promoting um oh i, I want to point out too i i do have special covers of the first three comics they're like variant covers and i only have 50 of them each so okay. once they're gone they're gone and they're the, the, you know the regular covers are only five bucks but the variant covers are ten uh, and okay. plus, I have a, some, some posters or prints as well. And then we have so many prints as well. This was all supposed to be for my Kickstarter that I had back in April. That didn't work out too well. <laughs> but again, moving forward. Right. No, felt absolutely. somehow. And I was, I was eventually going to sell these at a Comic Con, which doesn't happen. <laughs> so, and that's why I, Collector's Maze is doing the online Comic Con event because that's. that's, um, that's what help us out, right? right? Yes, exactly. So we yeah. can help promote a lot of that. Um, is there anything else that you want to share with uh, fans and followers at this time? Well, the one thing is I have a Facebook group on uh, on Facebook called the Turkana fan page. I've had it for quite some time, and there's a lot of people, well, about 1,500 people in it. And the fans go in there, and they share their uh, fan, uh, fan art of Turkana. Fan art. It's been around for like five years, and people, kids or whatever, whoever draw, they, they love drawing her. Right. Right. And you can go to Turkana.com, click on fan art, and you can see the fan art. I'm like humbled that people like her already. I'm surprised networks haven't come to say, hey, people like that. <laughs> you know? so, hopefully that happens someday. But yeah, there's fan art of her already, and people draw her because they love the way the character looks and stuff. So that, that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. So there's a, there's a Facebook fan okay. club. Uh, you can become a member of that, and uh, there, uh, I, you know, fan art is in there as well. I, I make a video every Monday, kind of giving an update of what's going on. Excellent. Um, there's also a, a like page on Facebook. I do more stuff with the with the fan club, but there is a like page if you want to like the page. And if they, people want to follow me on uh, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, I, you know, I'm easy to follow because I have been a voice actor probably for over 10 years, been in radio before that. And if you just Google the name Frank James <laughs> Bailey, I'm sure you can find me. <laughs> Matter of fact, if you Google the word Turkana, I'm sure you can find Turkana. Because I've been doing this for a while. And yeah, it, it's easy to find. And I want it that way because it's called a good internet footprint. So Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, and I, yeah, I was really interested in all of the different um, information that I came across. So mm -hmm. um, we're hoping to get this all out to Collector's Maze. So I, I thank you so much for joining us today. Um, from Collector's Maze, please um, be safe and take care. And okay. we hope to see you again, you know, soon in in um, face to face. Because all right, yeah. Um, this has been with Collector's Maze. See this and our many other interviews at collectorsmaze.com.